Hello everyone, Taylor Hunt here from the Victorian Fisheries Authority. I'm delighted to be giving you a short presentation uh, this evening all about everything that we've learned about our wild trout fishery here in Victoria through the Wild Trout Fisheries Management Program and how trout management is caring for your trout fishery to make sure that we can get the best out of it and everyone can enjoy wild trout fishing in Victoria. I'm gonna share my screen with you right now. I've got some uh, slides which I've prepared and hopefully you can see that now. Um, so this presentation provides some really good context and background um, for the Talk Wild Trout Conference uh, and the presentations which you're going to be viewing over the next three days. Great presentations from a really uh, talented bunch of speakers and presenters, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, this gives you a bit of information about what we've learnt, uh, where we're going, and how we really care about trout. Um, so for starters, I really want to um, be clear that trout fishing in Victoria and wild trout fishing in Victoria is really important. Fishing for wild trout has a rich cultural history in Victoria. Lots of people enjoy doing it and have done it for a long time. And it continues today to provide important social and economic benefits to the community. The Victorian government recognises the high value of trout fishing and has invested a significant amount of funding, particularly in the last five years, to better understand and support wild trout fisheries. And these images just show how beautiful and fantastic wild trout fishing is, takes you to some amazing places uh, and we think it's something that uh, everyone should be able to enjoy and we want to enjoy it into the future. In 2014, the VFA formed a reference group of trout fishers who are really representatives from major trout fishing organisations such as the Australian Trout Foundation, the Mansfield and District Fly Fishers, VR Fish, the Victorian Fly Fishers Association, the Council of Victorian Fly Fishing Clubs, independent fishers as well. And this group was uh, formed to help prepare a program of works to better understand our wild trout fishery and what we can do to manage and improve wild trout fishing for all anglers. The program was called the Wild Trout Fisheries Management Program and it was funded by recreational fishing license fees and the state government. Uh, it is the largest investment that we've ever had in wild trout fisheries in Victoria. Around about $2 million of funding has gone into it uh, and it's been an incredible partnership collaboration between anglers, researchers from the Arthur Ryler Institute and various universities and managers. Uh, and we've learnt an incredible amount about our wild trout fishery and it's really paid dividends. The Wild Trout Fisheries Management Program has used an evidence-based uh, program of research, monitoring and engagement and resulted in some groundbreaking outcomes which have reshaped the VFA's trout fisheries management. It's reshaped uh, how we engage with fishers and I think we've got a better relationship with trout fishers than we've ever had before and collectively we know all about our wild trout fishery and the things that we can do to continue to improve it. So specifically, what have we learnt through the Wild Trout Fisheries Management Program? Well, oh, gone a little bit far there. So uh, for a start, over the course of the Wild Trout Program, the last five years, we've actually conducted 46 population surveys and assessments of trout streams. And all of those surveys, which have been conducted by Arthur Ryler Institute researchers, have told us that trout are seasonally dynamic, but they're resilient. They are a resilient species. They bounce up and down over the years, depending on the conditions. But when conditions are suitable and the habitat is okay, they come back really quickly. So that gives us um, some confidence that if we get the habitat right, the trout uh, populations can go well and the trout fishing can follow. We've developed these user-friendly wild trout report cards for lots of our streams every year. And these give us a broader understanding of our wild trout fish populations. They tell us about recruitment, the numbers of fish in the water, how that compares with previous years. They tell us about um, multiple size classes of fish and also whether there are some larger fish in the system to breed and for anglers to catch. And broadly speaking, these report cards have told us that in the high country reaches of lots of our streams, 
trout populations are in really high abundance. In the lowland reaches, uh, we see in summer, the water temperatures can get hot and that's where typically there are less trout and they move towards colder water. So we've learned that hot summers and warm temperatures can impact trout. Um, trout are a cold water species and they will actively avoid hot water. The researchers at the Arthur Ryler Institute through the Wild Trout Program uh, implanted lots of tags in some trout and we tracked them in the Dalatite River and we saw clearly that trout will move upstream in response to hot water temperatures. Victoria's climate is warming. Uh, Dr. John Morangiello, who's presented at three of the Talk Wild Trout conferences that we've had, has um, done some really good analysis on this and found that it is, uh, it is very clear Victoria's climate is getting warmer and drier. And this could result in up to a 50% decline in the range of brown trout in Victoria by 2030. So it's pretty sobering results. But the good news is, the silver lining is, we have a solution that we can apply that all of us can contribute to and that is happening right now by lots of trout fishers. And this will help improve our trout populations. And it's planting the streamside vegetation along our streams. And this is critical because it actually provides shade. It, uh, it brings the water temperatures down, it buffers those water temperatures and helps our trout populations to have better habitat and to flourish. And a huge amount of credit in the uh, revegetation work goes to the Australian Trout Foundation, Terry George and all the team and all the trout fishers who have contributed and are doing an incredible amount of work in this space uh, and really improving the social license of, uh, of trout fishing, they're improving the trout populations and improving trout fishing for everyone. And I'll talk more about that afterwards. So we've learned that streamside shading is really important. We've also learned that harvest pressure on the Upper Goulburn River was low. And generally we see in our wild trout population and our fisheries that overfishing is not an issue. We do not see lots of anglers taking out enough trout that it could be an issue for sustainability. It's very low harvest rates. Fishing is not an issue in our wild trout fishery. We've also tested the theory around stocking yielding brown trout into rivers, whether that could boost populations. We did a really nice study where we uh, fin clipped with the help of trout anglers, 30,000 brown trout and we stocked them into two rivers and then monitored those rivers with electro fishing and angling. And with those, uh, of those 30,000 fish that we stocked, we found only 16 of those fish. So it's really clear that stocking trout on top of wild populations doesn't have a material benefit to the population. We heard from April Vokey from Canada, um, talked about similar experiences around the world and in Montana as well. So that was really clear to hear that, that it's not just us experiencing this. On that point, we've been really fortunate through the Wild Trout Program, through the Talk Wild Trout Conferences, the five that we've had to date, we've been able to bring over trout experts from around the world. And they have told us that we are not alone. Um, Dr. Dan DeWalter from the USA, from Trout Unlimited, he told us that if you take care of the habitat, the fish will take care of themselves. Make sure the habitat's good for the fish, the fish will flourish and the fishing will go along with that. And that's uh, really clear here as well. Habitat is the key. Uh, April Vokey, as I said, she gave us her experiences from Canada. Dr. John Hayes talked about what trout need in the stream from a New Zealand perspective and applied that here in Victoria. Mr. Jim Fredericks talked about his uh, management aspects from the USA. And most recently we had uh, Hilary Hutchison come out and talk about her love for trout fishing, uh, and angler advocacy and so forth. The key theme that all of these people have said to us is climate is affecting trout around the world, but habitat is the best thing that we can do to make sure our trout populations flourish and we've got good trout fishing. By far the most important thing that we've learned through the Wild Trout Fisheries Management Program is that angler engagement and partnerships are critically important in managing the wild trout fishery. And we've tried to embrace this 
every step of the way through the Wild Trout Fisheries Management Program and in the conference that you will see over the next three days. There's lots of angler presentations and input in this and it's a two-way street. We're all talking, we're all contributing. It's a partnership. It started from the very beginning through the Trout Reference Group with the Australian Trout Foundation. We meet regularly, we talk about the program, we design what we want to test, what we want to trial, um, things that we can do to improve the fishery and we learn together. It's a real partnership approach. We've had anglers involved hands-on in the program as well. This is um, anglers helping fin clip some of the fish at Snobs Creek that went into the stocking trial. Um, so really good to get involved, uh, not just with the fin clipping, but also with the fantastic habitat work which is going on. Um, and this is happening uh, right throughout Victoria, uh, not just in the trout fishery, but trout fishers are leading the way. As I said, the Australian Trout Foundation and Terry George, uh, Paul Stoltz have shown an incredible amount of leadership in this space. And there's been something like 31 projects completed in the last three years, uh, 42 kilometers of streams replanted, around 25,000 plants. And trout fishers are really grabbing this and taking control and uh, getting the best out of their trout fishery by planting these trees. So it's fantastic to see, and there's more and more of it happening as well. Anglers are getting involved um, with the incubator trials. So coming along to Snobs Creek, helping stack the incubators with eggs, getting out there in the streams with our fisheries managers like John Douglas, camping in their swags in the, uh, in the, um, the frost as well, uh, and testing to see if these things can help benefit uh, our trout population. So we're trialing these things, we're having a go. Uh, and most recently, uh, the, wild, the uh, development of the Victorian Wild Trout Strategy, led by the Australian Trout Foundation with uh, a tremendous amount of input from trout fishers. We had a, uh, a workshop at Box Hill, organised by the ATF, um, really good input, and it sets the vision for the wild trout fishery for the next five years. And there's some really clear things which we're going to do, which will roll out in this conference as well. Of course, the Talk Wild Trout conferences have been an amazing success. Um, started in 2015, um, we've had one every year. We've been to uh, Mansfield uh, four times, we've been to Melbourne. We've had uh, well over a thousand anglers in person there. It's been all about learning, sharing and networking and uh, anglers are hooked on the Wild Trout Conference and we are continuing the tradition over the next three days, this time in a digital sense. But it's been fantastic getting together talking about what's going on with our trout fishery, um, learning together and uh, really advancing, I guess, what we can do to improve our fishing um, out there in Victoria's high country. So lots of involvement and it's going to continue. You're going to hear more about this over the next three days. I just want to finish on how trout management is caring for our trout fishery. So here at the VFA, we all love trout as well. We're all trout fishers. We're all recreational fishers and we're really passionate and hopefully you can hear that in our presentations and when we talk to you as well. You've seen all the background and everything that we've done. More specifically, um, these are some of the things which I think indicate how much we care about trout. Um, for a start, we've got very strong relationships with trout fishers and I think, and others tell me as well, our relationship with trout fishers is better than it's ever been. Um, very strong relations with the Australian Trout Foundation, with the Victorian Trout Fisher Reference Group. This is a partnership approach that we follow in managing our wild trout fishery. We've got our wild trout strategy, which is actually led by trout fishers, which we are going to implement together. And the Australian Trout Foundation have been successful in um, securing a recreational fishing licence grant project to implement some of those things in the wild trout strategy. And, you know, we're meeting, we're talking about it, we're doing things on the ground. Our fisheries managers, there's John Douglas out there with Matt Byrne in the water. Um, we're getting our waders on and when we knock off, we go for a fish as well. Um, so we love it and we've got really good, strong relations there. We are continuing to invest in habitat at every opportunity. So we've recently supplied um, habitat grants 
$30,000 to get more volunteers involved in, um, in this habitat restoration, which is going on. We've had the Angler Riparian Partnerships Program, which was sponsored by DALP, um, a million dollars put in over the last four years to get these projects underway with catchment management authorities um, and getting anglers involved in this. And uh, we're continuing to look for more opportunities to do this. Lots of projects through the Recreational Fishing Licence Trust are all about habitat, and we know that will improve our trout fishery. We're continuing to learn and apply evidence-based management. So we do surveys where we need to, continuing those 46 surveys that we've done. We'll do report cards when we do surveys. We're continuing our fry stocking and incubator trials. And just in the last month, we've stocked another five waters with 200,000 trout fry to test whether fry stocking can boost trout populations. Um, we will look at incubator trials again next year with the Australian Trout Foundation. And we've recently also, um, with great assistance from the Australian Trout Foundation, acquired some wild trout eggs from the Threadbow River with the help of New South Wales Fisheries. Mitch, Cam Westerway, um, fantastic support. During COVID, we managed to get those across the border to Snobs Creek, apply the protocols that we needed to hatch them out. And uh, by the time this presentation is viewed, those fish, those fry would have been stocked in Nariel Creek. And that is to test whether or not these wild trout can accelerate the recovery of uh, bushfire affected trout populations. So we're continuing to learn, we're having a go and um, we're getting the best out of our trout fishery from what we learn. We are encouraging responsible fishing practices and enforcing the regulations. Our, our education and enforcement officers do a fantastic job. You'll hear a presentation from them over the next three days. They make sure people are following the rules, they educate people, and we are really keen on uh, responsible practices. So if you choose to let your fish go, making sure you keep it where you support the body, you give it the best chance of survival and so on. You hear more about that in the trout conference over the next three days as well. We're promoting Victoria's premier fishing and encouraging the next generation. So we want Victorians to get, it, to get out there and enjoy it. And that will help us get the resources to continue to um, try these things and to manage it to its, uh, to its best ability to get the best fishing we can. And we're always looking for new opportunities to create great fishing. And that, that includes in our wild trout fishery and our stock trout fishery. You will hear from David Kramer to talk about the work underway investigating Tarrago Reservoir as a great brown trout fishery close to Melbourne. That's coming up over the next three days. We've stocked tiger and cheetah trout at Lake Purrumbeet, so uh, a completely new hybrid trout species for you to um, trial. We've got better access at um, some of our lakes in the middle of Victoria and better river access. And this really falls under the state government's target 1 million plan to get more people fishing more often. There are lots of things under the target 1 million package which are for trout fishers. And better access is one of them, as I mentioned, at places like Hepburn and Colburn and Tullaroop. You can put your boats on the water now. We're increasing trout stocking to 1.2 million trout. So that is a record number of trout. We've never done that many before. And that goes from little uh, uh, fry that I mentioned, fingerlings as well, right up to family fishing sized rainbow trout, which go in our family fishing waters and urban waters and the stonker rainbows as well. And those catchable size fish and those stonkers really take um, great fishing to the people, often in urban situations around Melbourne. So people who can't necessarily travel a long way um, can get out there and experience some fantastic fishing and it's been really successful. We've also got some upgrades at Snobs Creek and what says uh, we love trout more than erecting a six metre trout out the front of Snobs Creek, um, which is down there in the corner. So why are we doing all of this? Because we at the VFA, we love trout as well. Um, we're all fishers, as I mentioned. We love getting out there and, and catching a few fish. 
Um, and trout are certainly amongst those species. And there's some of our, there's a, a CEO, Travis, and our director, Dallas, uh, myself, Anthony Forster, John Douglas, we, Michelle, um, everyone at the VFA, we love our trout fishing and we're really keen on it. So we want to make the best of it, but we want Victorians as well to get out there and uh, enjoy um, some of these beautiful um, places that we've got and fantastic experiences um, that we can share in our wild trout fishery. So I hope you've enjoyed that presentation. Um, I'm going to stop it now, but I look forward to taking any questions or comments that you might have in the question and answer sessions. Thank you very much.